Welcome to So You're Kinda a Big Deal, a weekly podcast deep diving into the lives of emerging and established tattoo artists. Listen in as we dig into origin stories, industry hot topics, and what it takes to survive in the world of tattooing. This is Tattoo Shop Talk. Join your hosts, Sean Headley and Dave Allen, every week as we host a new guest. It's no secret Dave and I have a good guy connection, but we have a great relationship with many respected suppliers. Working with Lucas Ford at Classic Tattoo, I saw firsthand the blood, sweat, and stress he went through building Good Guy. Creating products for your peers is no easy task. With many to critique any small missteps, including myself, tattooer owned and family operated since day one. With Lucas, Rob, and Natalie at the helm, you know exactly what you are getting. High quality products, fair prices, and excellent customer service. Shop, support, Good Guy. The Hold Fast Social Club keeps expanding and adding features to make the life of tattooers easier. We just launched a classified section for pros only. Sell your tattoo gear, prints, whatever in one spot. This is on top of a platform with peer-to-peer vouching, direct connect, a wait list, and geo-searching. Now you can find guest spots or forever homes at studios everywhere. No guessing, no awkward conversations. See what shops or artists have to offer. Mark them as favorites or add yourself to their wait list to let them know you are interested. Old Fast Social Club keeps adding features to make connecting easy. Pros only. A place where the best of us can elevate each other. Awesome. <coughs> oh, oh, that, big, that big recording thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we should do it. We should just disable that so it doesn't. It, everyone pause as soon as it happens. It's like, uh, yeah. oh, I, we're serious I now. Try and, yeah, I try and do it whenever he's talking because then maybe they'll notice. But yeah, no, yeah. it's, it's anyway. huge on the, the screen. Count, the countdown's a little intimidating, right? It's like, yeah, it's like oh, here it comes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Is there? Uh, do you like Curtis or Kurt? Uh, either one, Curtis, most of the time, but, you know, whatever. Okay, Curtis, I, I don't there, get easily offended any, by that stuff, so. Okay, yeah. Is there any way you could turn up your mic input maybe a little? You're a little mm. quiet. How do I do that? He sounds, he's yeah. really loud on this end. Is he? Oh, okay, yeah. it's, probably just yeah. my, it's probably just my headphones, then, so don't even worry about it. Yeah, and you're yeah. quiet to me, which is interesting. but That's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dave, yeah. Dave was on I've already been to the gym I've had a few coffees I'm fucking I'm wide awake I was going to say you are probably been up already for like fucking five hours so. what time is it 8.30 yet? no close four yeah Jeez. yeah it's, uh, I'm useless at what's that I was just asking is it it's 9.30 for you right Curtis it's nine thirty for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah so we're in, yeah. we're in the same time zone. Dave's in a different one. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. I've been up for a couple cool. hours. Not as many as Dave, I don't think, but I've been up for a couple hours. <laughs> well, you get a little bit older. You get a little bit older yeah. in your fifties. You'll be you'll be getting up plenty early. Yeah, it happens, man. Right? It happens. <laughs> it, uh, two two weeks ago, I was getting up without an alarm at six a.m. Time, the simplest time change happens. I can't get out of bed. Like our, oh, our dog, our dog is like at eight thirty. Like uh, feed me. I need to piss. Oh, fucking it's weird. so weird. And I, I went to bed at fucking like nine thirty last night, like an old man, and I can't get out of bed. Just the darkness. <laughs> I think just the Alberta dreary gray darkness is getting me. So, but yeah, and fifty uh, fifty two coming up here for you. Yeah, in a few weeks. <laughs> Yeah. 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 All right. Hi, Curtis. Thanks for joining yeah. us. Hey, Sean. <laughs> Enough about us. <laughs> hey, well, guest. <laughs> yeah, welcome to our show. This is why we usually get on a few minutes beforehand because we're just like Tweedledee and Tweedledum and we just bounce back and forth a little bit. It's so, great. Yeah. I love it. I love it, man. Yeah. Awesome. So, uh, just the usual. I have to think of another way to do this always, but uh, just a generic introduce yourself to uh, our six people that listen. And uh, let's get started on your journey. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, first of all, thank you guys so much for having me, right? Uh, yeah. I, I haven't really done a whole lot of the 
tattoo podcasting um, too much, but I found out about your guys's and I've been listening and it's like awesome. I've been really digging it. So uh, I'm oh, stoked cool. to be awesome. here today. Cool. Tell, you know, tell all your um, listeners. Tell all your fans. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and uh, you know, thanks to Tim. I think um, you know Tim. Tim mentioning me Tim uh, in your guys' podcast. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, kind of, kind of got my foot in the door here with you guys today, and uh, uh, I'm just so appreciative of of that guy and his friendship and uh, amazing dude. He's coming so, back well, on. Thanks actually. for having me. What's yeah, that? Yeah, we're we're gonna have him I back on. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're actually going to have him back on, and he's going to be our 2024, like, New Year episode. Awesome. Yeah, he's yeah, so he's rad. Great, right? He's so, he's yeah. just like, man, I could just talk to that guy forever, you know? Like, every time yeah. I called him on the phone, I'm like, okay, this is going to be a long conversation, because we just, like, I don't <laughs> know, we just have a lot of things to talk about, you know? And it's it's yeah. great, you know? Yeah. So. Uh, um, yeah, it was the same. Yeah, like, when we so, started with him, it was awesome. Yeah, sorry, go on. Oh, no, uh, sorry, go on. Uh, so yes, yeah. uh, I I am Curtis Burgess. Uh, I tattoo at Tribal Rights in Fort Collins, Colorado. Um, been there my whole career. I've been at one oh, shop. Really? Started. No shit. Wow. Yeah. Your own shop, or did you buy the shop eventually? So I I took it over from my mentor. So Amazing. my mentor actually bought it from the two people who opened it and then eventually uh so it's a co-ownership i own it with a body piercer named chad williams um Ew. so we co-own no, it together <laughs> what's that I said, oh, both like, uh, I'm piercers. <laughs> yeah it's funny man i'm it's kidding funny. i'm kidding you i'm know, kidding yeah yeah but but that is it's like it's like that's like it's a, um a stereotype in our industry, kind of, right? And Absolutely. I, and, and yeah. that's the thing. But, dude, I'll tell you, like, the piercers at my shop are so awesome, man. I love them. I love hanging out with them. I love that they're there. They bring an energy to the shop that that wouldn't exist without them. Yeah. Like, it's awesome. Yeah. It's super we, awesome. We, we always worked with great piercers. It was just the... I don't know. It was just tattooers. You had to have a fucking adversary in a tattoo shop. So it was the easiest one. But we worked with great yeah. piercers too. Back yeah, in the day. yeah, we had great piercers at Sacred Heart. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and we have the the location that we got is uh is pretty cool because it's um kind of like a bi level building. So we have like a main entrance floor, and then we got like tattooing upstairs and then piercing downstairs. So it's oh, kind of like. Separate but connected, and um, yeah, yeah. it's a really, yeah. a really unique building. It was uh, opened in the in 1970s as a snow ski rental in Colorado. <laughs> I went there as a kid, man. I rented snow Crazy. skis there <laughs> when I was a kid. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and so it's cool. It's got this big alpine roof and like some fireplaces in there and and stuff like Rad. that. And so, but I think that that buy level kind of helps, you know separate the piercing and tattooing just enough, right? Yeah. So where it yeah. Like, has a good healthy balance there and yeah, and does that. Yeah. So yeah, you, you even need that in just some plain tattoo shops. Yeah. <laughs> you need, you right, need to separate right. some of those yeah. tattooers too, right? Yeah. 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 It's Fucking, nice to have yeah. just like just a little bit of separation. Like I still like yeah. the I still like my friends being able to come in and like say what's up and like do that. Like I don't want to be so private that like my clients don't stop by anymore. Um, but yeah. I don't want to be so accessible that it's like, all right, this is a little crazy and I can't concentrate. And you <laughs> yeah. know, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, let's yeah. dial it back a little bit. We kind of asked you to get started and. Um... Kind of about how yeah, you yeah rambled a little bit. I rambled. Oh, a little that's bit. Our... no, that's yeah. us. <laughs> yeah, that's this podcast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Cool. I'm I'm doing it then. Yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah, you're doing perfect. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why don't we start? Uh, give us. It's interesting that you took your shop over from your mentors. So who was who were your mentors and uh, or mentor? What year? What year did and you start? Yeah. So I, I started in 99. 
Uh, so I guess uh, 24 years uh, I've been tattooing now. Um, wow. My mentor was uh, John Soprenit. Um, awesome dude, man. He retired from tattooing. He doesn't tattoo anymore. But uh, man, that guy was a trip. Like we we had a lot of fun together. We did a lot of really cool things. And um, you know, I think I think mentors can be hard, right? Especially back then. Like it it wasn't easy to apprentice, right? And there was days where you're just like dude, is my mentor going to kick my ass today? Like, what's going to happen when I go in, you know? Uh, but even saying that, like, I still think the dude is awesome. Even when I was afraid he was going to yeah. kick my ass, I still like him. You know what I mean? Um, he was a wild dude, man. Yeah, definitely. But, uh, but uh, yeah, so he he was like my full mentor, you know, and then, and then as it goes in tattooing, we grow a little bit. And, uh, and I met a few people down the line, uh, who helped me out a lot. There's a, uh, of course, Colorado. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I just said, of course. Oh yeah. Um, there's a tattooer in Southern Colorado named Matt Rousseau. I don't know if you guys are familiar no. with Matt Rousseau. Um, no. he, he's been tattooing, maybe uh maybe a little over 30 years now um and he really took me under under his wing too man and he's like such a phenomenal tattooer and and was so cool to me and so open with sharing information and like passing stuff along to me and i and he's just like he's just awesome so he he was probably another big mentor for me along the way was it a was there a was there? I was wondering. It was there like a tight knit community in Fort Collins back then for tattooing? Because it's it's not like a epicenter of tattooing or anything like that. Was there a lot of rivalries in town? Were you able to go to other shops and see what was going on? Uh, not really. You know, it was small. You know, um, Fort Collins has grown a lot over the years, but we're we're a small college town. Um, so when I started tattooing, there was three shops um then and uh actually one of them closed down a couple of years ago it was uh greg skibo who used to be uh the president of the apt um okay oh and he, i yeah. believe he opened his shop in 1974 so he oh, was shit. like oh yeah dude he was like the man up here you know yeah uh and i tried to to go in there you know and got the like yeah, get the fuck out kind of thing, you know, which was like, <laughs> which was cool. I kind of expected it. So much it, for the know? alliance. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. But, but eventually, you know, um, I did hang out with Greg some, uh, after some years, you know what I mean? He, he, and he's a cool guy, you know, but that was just how it was back then. It was just yeah. like, you know, you know, Absolutely. especially some young kid who's like, Oh, I love to draw, man. What are you guys doing in here? It's like, get the fuck out, man. <laughs> Gotta make money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so uh, how did you land that tribal? Like, were you just going in there and getting tattooed and eventually wormed your way in? Or did you just keep pounding on the door? Yeah. So, so you know, I had to keep coming back over and over. Right. Like uh, John at the time, you know, I would come in and, and you know, I was interested in tattooing. It, it was like a thing that I really wanted to try to do. But I had some friends. Right. That had started doing that out of the house. Right. So I was watching that and I was just like, oh, man, like I feel like this is what I want to do, but I, I don't want to do it that way. Like, I want to try to yeah. get an apprenticeship and I want to try to, like, do it the right way. Um, so, you know, I, I went and talked to Greg and, uh, you know, he's like, get the fuck out. And I was like, OK, yes, I'm out of here. Uh, and then I talked to I talked to another shop um, and, and they were basically like, yeah, give me money. I'll teach you how to tattoo. And I was like, eh, that didn't feel good either. Uh, and then John kept making me come back. He's like, I'm busy. Come back later. Like, okay, come back later. I'm busy. Come back two days. Okay, come back in two days. I'm busy. Come back tomorrow. You know, it was like over and over. And then eventually I caught him and, and he gave me the time and uh and 
you know, he asked to see some art and, and I showed him some stuff that I had and he was like, screw it, man, I'm going to teach you. And I was like, Sick. Cool. <laughs> Got in, you know, it, it, it's awesome. awesome, right? Like it was hard back yeah. then to, to get How in, old were you? you know, 19, 19, fuck. 19, you didn't know shit about yeah. anything. Mm-mm. You going to art? Had you gone no, to art man. school? What was, your, what was your art background at that point? nothing man i did i did like drawing through high school you know what i mean but but that was it you know and i i grew up drawing my whole life but uh yeah i didn't have any formal art training or any of that stuff you know uh so so yeah i met john and and he started teaching me and and you know it was there was we we learned a lot together man you know when when uh he showed me how to make needles. We were making double stack 12. I don't know if anybody else who ever used double stack 12s, but they are gnarly, man. Not 12. It was just like. <laughs> Not the 12s. <laughs> yeah. I don't even, I've never heard of anybody else who's used them. It was just like, just like tear the skin up right away, man. Just like, <laughs> you know. Uh, but, but that's how we thought we did it. And so we just kept going, just like, oh, you know, it's not the needles. It's just that we don't know what the fuck we're doing, right? But eventually we started <laughs> learning together. And uh, and uh, he learned uh, how to make mags from another tattooer. And, and he comes back and he's like, bro, wait till you try this. <laughs> I'm like, really? He's like, dude, this is a game changer, you know? And, and so we're in the back and he comes out, we make mags. I'm like, Oh my God, this is like, it like, I I wonder if things like that happen for the younger generation now, right? You know what? It was like our tattooing changed overnight. I don't know about younger people, but I don't know how many people we've interviewed that have told the exact same story about suddenly discovering mags. But the wild thing to me is, is that the, the few people that have said very similar stories, it's all been around 99 to like, 2002 i'd already been tattooing for 10 years so for me i'm Damn. like what do you mean you guys just learned about mag yeah <laughs> like for so, me it's wild because i was using them so early in my career i guess i was just extremely fortunate but it was wild to me that at the, the scale of tattooing even in 1999 and and the amount of like amazing artists that were you know just on the forefront that there was still so much information not shared and not known. It's pretty yeah, wild. Absolutely. Did you start with Mags then? Did you know about them right from the get-go? Or I I knew about Mags in my second year of tattooing because I started kind of on my own. I had some help, but like guys that were helping me, which were I'm super grateful for, uh, like local biker guys and stuff, um, they were all really great black and gray guys, and they loved their their six flats, their seven flats and stuff, right? So I was using that, and then um, and then a guy named Dave was like, you got to check this out, this guy Dave Hughes. He's the one I originally bought my equipment off of, and he showed me originally how to make needles, um, and then he showed me these mags, and I was like, what? what is this? And I wasn't making them well. And then when I met uh, Bill Baker, he helped me refine my needles. And that was 94 that I was like, then just using only mags. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. crazy though. Cause it's pretty universal with everyone we've interviewed that that's. Yeah. That they've had that same experience where they, they were using rounds only or flats and then mags came on the scene. So that's. And so they, you were you apprenticed under Sean, so you knew about Max then, right? Oh yeah, well, fuck! I walked into like the best shop in Canada at the time. You, you could possibly yeah, yeah. hope to work in. Like there was so much knowledge there. Just being green and not knowing any different, it was just the norm. So I, I was making mags from day one, like years before mm-hmm. I even tattooed anybody. Yeah, when yeah. he was making our needles, he was making mags. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, like looking back, it felt like I used those those double stack forever, right? But it was probably only like two years, really. 
But yeah. because I had only been tattooing two years, that was like all the tattooing I had done, right? So then it was yeah. like, yeah. you know, yeah. four years had gone and it was like, well, I used this for half of my career, right? Now I'm like, yeah, I <laughs> yeah. used them for a little bit, right? But, uh, <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah it's wild. Because like you said, like most like young people nowadays, they don't just get to choose from like mags, but they get to choose from long taper, medium taper, texture, yeah. polish, curved. like curved, like so many different like needle styles and sizes. You know what I mean? Like seven, well, up to 27. Like it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty wild. So, and they're all pretty good for the most part, too. Like, yeah, like, yeah. Compared to like what the bullshit that I was making, you know, like it took me a <laughs> yeah. while to really figure out how to make a good needle, right? Like, uh, yeah, you yeah. know, it, it yeah. just happened right away. Like, uh, when you started you know, making your mags, were you using a razor blade or were you using forceps? So we started with the razor blade and then we figured out about the forceps. And then it was like, oh, this is, this definitely yeah. made things a lot easier. <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. But you had to find the right forceps because if dangerous. the teeth were like, you know, too deep, then maybe you'd have too wide a mag. Or I, I remember going shopping yeah, for forceps yeah. when I was an apprentice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I uh, just looking at go the over you, but so there's getting the, layer. How big it, the grooves in there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah. there was a guy named Blair that was uh, that ran Sacred Heart for a little while, like really early on in the years. Dave knows who I'm talking about. So he used to make needles for the the guy at the shop there, and he didn't use a razor blade to make mags. He used the foil from gum, like from juicy oh, fruit. Yeah. I've heard would, like, about that. Yeah, and, yeah. And that he used. And then when I came out to do a guest spot from Toronto, I was like, he, like. He's like, well, that's how he knows how to make them. I'm like, dude, use a fucking razor blade. <laughs> and he's like, I never, he's like, I never thought of that. And I was like, yeah. And I'm like, and if you get like the heavy duty, he's like, like the thin razor blades. I'm like, no, get like the heavy duty, like work ones, duty one. because like the bevel on the razor is perfect. And he was yeah. like, yeah. Oh, that's good. They yep. a lot of time. <laughs> Try to weave foil. Like, yeah. Crazy. But but isn't it kind of like, isn't it kind of this thing that I guess for me, like, I feel bad that the younger tattooers getting into it don't get to go through that stuff. Because all of it, like, looking back, like, yeah, but I think, man, that was some of the magic that happened, you know, like, it was so cool. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I think they, we wouldn't know because we're not there, but I think they have their own discoveries and challenges, right? Like, yeah. Absolutely. They must. I mean, they have it, yeah. they obviously have it easier, but in, in a, they're also, it's a different time. So who knows what their challenges are that we're just not aware mm -hmm. of, right? Right. Like we have community. Yeah, yeah. They're like, going to have, I, I feel like our generation had a community that established itself that's, you know, lifelong. Whereas I know a lot of younger tattooers, they're just, they're trying to discover other tattooers to have friends, you know, and I'm amazed how many yeah. don't, right? Like, like right. we were talking about before you came on the air, how most of your friends, you met through tattooing. It was kind of the same thing, right? Right. Yeah. Right. They'll be. Yeah, they'll be on like, a. Uh, they'll be on a podcast or something, and instead of talking about needles, they'll be like, "Remember when we used to draw on iPads? That was crazy, right? <laughs> it's like so primitive, you know?" <laughs> yeah. 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 Now I just, I now just tell my phone what to draw for me. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, right. So, AI. <laughs> <laughs> I want a tiger, best not to some oh, no. bit of water yeah. and that, like Hokusai. Yeah, yeah, wow. Right, right, All right. right, so back to 99, making mags, discovering mags. So did that change, yeah. like, did your work really start to shift because of that? Oh, I think so. Yeah, technically, for sure. Technically, but I think my yeah. tattoos got better overnight by switching needles, you know, not that they were like, yeah, even close to being good before that, but they were like, it definitely made them a lot better, you know, uh, yeah. and, and of course, like, yeah. I think the biggest yeah. thing was the healing, right? The healing was so much better. You know, I wasn't damaging the skin as yeah. much, so, uh, much better heels and, and things coming after learning how to make those, you know? 
Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> no doubt. Happier clients. How, yeah. How, yeah. How, long, uh, how long did John make you basically clean the shop and do bullshit jobs until you could put needle to skin? Oh, I think it was about a year, probably, like oh, right around a year, yeah. something like that. Decent long time. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So did you have another job then to supplement your income while you were pounding the fucking mop on the floors at the shop or was he did, paying yeah. you well enough? Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I didn't get paid during my apprenticeship, you know, so oh. I had a job at a pizza shop um, and I was working there and I was good. At, I've always been good about trying to save money, you know, so I was packing money away and uh, I, I got uh this basement that was rented out of my friend's mom owned this house and she rented the basement out to me for 300 bucks a month like everything included you know i didn't have to worry about trash and all that stuff and um so man luckily all that happened because that that made it work you know what i mean yeah. um and then yeah he he let me start tattooing um you know I, and, and Thankfully, I grew up in the town that I started tattooing in because there was people willing to get tattooed by me because <laughs> they were my <laughs> friends. They didn't care if it sucked, right? They're just like, cool, you're my friend and you make tattoos now. Like, love to get tattooed by you, you know? Um, yeah. What would I have done without them, man? Like, you know, uh, it, it, without them, I never would have done it, right? These, you know, uh, and and. Good thing we were all young too, because if they were older, they'd be like, "Nah, dude, I ain't getting that. That's like I'm gonna be terrible." Oh, shit. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it was cool. I I had a a community there that kind of helped me out right from the get go, you know, where, and were willing to get tattooed by me and and let me start learning and do that, you know. Yeah. Um, nice. Yeah. And then, you know, the other thing, like, I think, you know, one of the biggest things for me to like really start learning was traveling to get tattooed too, man. Like, yeah. I don't know if you guys did that a lot, but like, I'm in a oh, small yeah. town, you know, and, it, and, uh, you know, we had our magazines and we had that stuff, but there wasn't a lot of other things we could look at to gain information then. So it's like you go get tattooed, you get to watch someone you how they do it, right? So yeah. yeah, so man, that was that was huge, you know. Yeah, I still think that that's more powerful than looking at your iPhone or even like people's pictures of their work. I think going and getting tattooed, I think that burns into your head that process. You know, I know watching Steve Moore tattoo and getting tattooed by him. There's so much that I do today as far as technical stuff, like how I put color in. It's every time I do it, I'm like, this is fucking like exactly how he moved to saying, because I watched it for hours. Yeah. I wish I'd watched his line work more, but <laughs> <it's> just... <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's funny, right, though, because of some of those people I got tattooed by 20 years ago, and I still remember that, right? And then I'm like doing it that way. They're like, dude, I did that 20 years ago, bro. Like, you shouldn't be doing it that way anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah I, still, I mean, remember it too yeah it makes you such know? an impact on you when you're that green too because i think you're just so fucking open to like taking it in you know like now yeah. i know what kind of watch somebody tattoo is hard like it's hard to sit there and like really watch what they're doing because there's the brain is so polluted with so much other tattoo information it's hard to like really get impacted by it is it just me or is it like every time you watch somebody else tattoo, you're like, why is it so easy for them? Like, <laughs> look, like they make it look so easy, right? And I'm like, so, yeah. like I'm struggling through this thing the whole time, so, you yeah. know? Me and, me and Dave were in uh, L.A. a little over a decade ago and we uh, went to visit Dennis Hulbritter. And I was watching him tattoo and I was just like, how do you fucking shade like that? Like. Yeah. It, just like yeah. a just doing this. I've been just, I've been tattooing for like twenty years, and I'm a total noob. So I'm like, how how do you shade like that? He's like, I practice, I guess. Like, <laughs> like, so, like so, it was wild. It literally was just like putting the mag in and going. <laughs> like it was, I was just like, 
what what's happening right now? Why is it all just like it was literally like he was just using like a watercolor brush and just being like, nah, there we go. I was blown away. Blown away. Yeah. yeah. Everyone that, else that, makes it look so easy. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I did a yeah. tattoo yesterday and it was a ton of fun, but man, I'm by the time I was done, I was I had to come home and have a nap. I was fucking just <laughs> mentally fucking destroyed. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Is that, yeah, is that, that we're, is that because we're older? What What is going on with that? I used to be able to tattoo for 10, 12 hours, and it was nothing. Now yeah. I tattoo for four, and I'm like, oh, God. You know? Yeah. 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 But I also yeah. think I'm like. so much. Yeah, but what did, yeah. Yeah, what did you do with your spare time before, though? You fucking went out and partied and had a good time with friends. Now yeah. you have family you have to be present for. You got friends. You're kids probably or whatever and you're trying to like your life is full so four hours of tattoo that's enough to fucking tax you yeah and i think it's like more mentally taxing now just like you know the yeah because before it was just like i I don't know like you just were going through it you didn't have everything figured out you were just like ah fucking whatever and now I'm a little more like, okay, like, you know, it takes a little more energy f- for me now to yeah. to try to make the right choices and, and do the right things for what I'm trying to accomplish, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you've, yeah. you've obviously accomplished a lot. Um, at what point did you start um, branching out from the, well, like taking over the shop you were in? Like that that's a big step for any tattooer, right? Well, yeah, I mean, that one was easy. My my mentor was like, so I'm out of here. You want the shop? I'm like, yeah, sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> easy, easy it enough. Wasn't, it, wasn't like, it was not like, oh, man, your art's looking really good. You want to, like, take over the shop, right? It was, it was just like, he, uh, he, man, he um, just did so many things. He was so good at so many things. And, uh he decided he was going to build this house truck. So he built this tiny home on the back of a fire truck um, and, and sold his Sweet. house and sold the shop. And so he had some money and he was like, I'm out, man. I'm just going to go like travel the world and like do my thing, you know, and, and good for him. You know, it's awesome. Yeah. You what know? year Amazing. was that? What year did you take over the shop? Uh, 2013. So just about 10 years, I guess almost 11 years ago now. Okay. okay. And what was yeah. that transition like? Yeah. Were there other artists in the shop? Was there like a, did you just, were you working alone yeah. at that point? No. So it was, it was my mentor and I for a long time. Um, and then we hired uh, a tattooer named Eric Erickson. Um, he's a great dude. Uh, he was a, he's a, in a band before he started tattooing in Seattle. So really into music and turned me into a, a ton of good music. Uh, but he's still at the shop. We still work together, man. He's coming up oh. on, I think, uh, probably 18 years or something like that. We've worked together for, um, oh, wow. and then, uh, Amazing. yeah. And then, uh, Ben, uh, Merrill, I work with him also. And he was right around that time too. Uh, he, I think we've been tattooing together about 17 years now. Um, and so, yeah, we took over and, and just kept riding as far as the tattoo side of it went. We did expand, um, about, uh, seven years ago was when we moved the shop over to, um, the kind of the ski rental place that I told you about. Um, and, uh, so we had a little more space then. And so we've had some tattooers kind of come and go, uh, between those times, but, but those guys yeah. have been there for a long time. Um, so yeah, it was pretty cool transition, you know, moving, moving over there. We were tight in that old shop, man. It was tight in that space. <laughs> yeah. How big was it? So it was like 900 square feet. Um, and we had four tattooers in there and then we had piercing that was like crazy busy. And the bathroom was through the tattoo room. So all the piercing clients would like come by and kick your lamp every day, you know, while you're tattooing, you know, it was just like, eventually you're just like, 
oh, I can't do this anymore. You know, like, <laughs> it's so tight. Um, but there's an interesting dynamic that happens in, in a small room like that. Like, I'm sure you guys have been yeah. there before where it's like everybody is so no close. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's like yeah. it's like one unit of conversation. It's like everybody's hanging out together, you know, yeah. in this room. Like you, you especially have to if come one art, especially if one yeah. artist is louder than the rest. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's in that conversation now. <laughs> <Go on. laughs> yeah, yeah. My my shop is is small, all open. You know, we just work kind of like it up circular square kind of thing we're we're literally like squirt bottle away from one another so it's just conversations non-stop and clients same thing like a lot of clients because you know we're tattooing people all day a lot of people they end up becoming kind of like semi friends and you know multiple times they're the same clients coming into the shop yeah. they're like oh hey and they know each other now so they're comfortable and that's the like the biggest kind of thing I'm I'm excited about my shop is is like clients like yeah I'm glad they love the tattooing but they really love the atmosphere and they talk yeah. about that a lot and that's like some of the biggest uh, uh, like reviews that I get on like Google and stuff is about my atmosphere because that was something that was really big in the 90s uh, with like my mentor and you know working with Steve Moore and and all these people was just like the atmosphere you know we wanted to be great yeah. tattooing but we also didn't want to be like fucking stuffy and you know stuck up and and you know not talking to people and be in little rooms and shit so so i love that i'm super grateful for it that's what how i ended up hanging out in tattoo shops was because of the atmosphere and the people in there it was like it was a great open studio where there's awesome conversation usually music it was just you know somewhere you wanted to hang out that just didn't exist anywhere else you know, my studio yeah. now is 800, 800 square feet, and we've got six full timers and two part timers. It's nice, man. Yeah, it's just, but, that's but it doesn't feel like, doesn't feel crowded. You know, because yeah, it's, it's nice, fun, it's comfy, right? right? It's fun. Yeah, right? it's fun. I love going to the shop, and I love hanging out, and like that's that's like one of the best things about being a tattooer is we're not stuck in our studio by ourselves. Like I think about that as a painter, like. Man, I, I love that social connection with people. I love that I get to yeah. make art for a living, but I love that I get to go hang out with my friends in the shop, whether it be my clients or or my coworkers or all of that, or the piercers even, right? Like, yeah, I love, totally. uh, yeah, I love having all those people around, and and I'm stoked that I have a job where I can make art and be around that energy, you know? Yeah, I gotta I gotta ask, how do you? How do you keep tattooers happy when you guys have been together that long? Like there's not a lot of shops that have retention for 18 years, you know, like that's not a, yeah. that's not an industry standard. Right. <laughs> um, so, so I guess one thing I should talk about, uh, Ben is actually leaving in January. So I don't know. I don't know. How to Fuck you, Ben. <laughs> Fuck you, Ben. Yeah. <laughs> um, what? 17 no, years. I mean, that's rock. <laughs> um, you know, I, I think, you know, I, I think after 17 years, maybe Ben just wants to do his own thing and he wants maybe a little quieter space. He wants, um, maybe not the same things as I want with the energy of all the things in there that I talked about before. Like, I think he wants to, he's yeah. getting older. I think maybe he wants to slow it down a little bit and, and maybe not have that as much. But I think a huge thing for us was like, and, and Eric too, is like, we always connected with art, right? We, we wanted to be better tattooers. We strived to do this and um, we would connect and talk to each other about our drawings. Hey man, what do you think about this? Like, you think I should change this part? What color you think I should do here? And when you, when you have that dynamic in your shop, you want to stay there because you're growing, right? Like you want to yeah. be around yeah, that yeah. because, because, and the more people you have that are doing that, like the more growth that I feel like happens. Um, Absolutely. It's easy so, to get so complacent. It's easy to get complacent around the same people too. If you, I find, you know, like right. it's interesting yeah. that you have a shop that isn't that way that people are every day wanting to learn more and share. 
Yeah. Yeah, and I got a new uh a new younger tattoo in there. I mean I he's uh probably been tattooing I think eight to ten years now, um, named Michael. Uh and that's been great, man. Like I love having his energy in there and he's you know, um he's bringing a different dynamic to things. He did go to art school and I didn't. So there's a lot that I have to learn from him um, about things that I've just never learned. <laughs> right. You know, we, we, we learned how to tattoo and draw at the same time. I think right? Yeah. a lot of us <laughs> yeah. from, from yeah. our generation, you know? Um, yeah. So, you know, he'll show me a trick and I'm like, yeah. Uh, show me a trick. And I'm like, wow, I never, knew you could do it that way cool whatever you know um but i don't know yeah it was it's been great i'm happy that everyone stayed around as long as they did you know um and and ben is a great dude man i got nothing but the best things to say about him and and i hope his new studio is what he's looking for and it's good for him you know so yeah absolutely yeah, yeah he doesn't yeah. owe you anything after 17 years shit no, nothing. Absolutely not. Yeah. And and yeah. No. you know, uh, man, he's he's. We've learned so much tattooing together over the years too. You know, like he's given yeah. me so much just from an art side. Like I wouldn't be, um, doing the drawings that I'm doing without you know working with that guy. So you know, yeah. yeah is he staying awesome, in man. now? Is he is he staying in Fort Collins? Yeah, he's staying in Fort Collins. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But yeah. you guys could still, Thankfully. you guys are going to still jam and get together and stuff, probably. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, we, how yeah. could we not, man? You know? Yeah. Like, we, yeah. 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 It's like we're too good of friends. Man, now. That's night. not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Paint morning. Uh, I don't I don't do nights anymore, man. I'm old. I do paint mornings now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you were you were mentioning earlier about traveling to get tattooed. Who are some of the mm -hmm. who are some of the memorable experiences you had traveling to get tattooed by? Yeah, yeah, man. Um so early on uh in two thousand well, my first, my first big one was I went to the National Tattoo Convention in San Antonio, Texas, and uh, I got tattooed by Paul Booth there, oh. um, 99. Um, so that was awesome, right? Like, talk about, you know, yeah, learning superstar. black and gray and, uh, and watching that happen. You know, like, he tattooed so differently than everything I ever knew. At that point, not yeah. that I knew anything. I was tattooing like maybe six months at that time, if even that. Um, so everything was magic that that I watched him do, <laughs> yeah. you know. Um, and then shortly after that, uh, I traveled to Tattoo City at Hardy Shop and uh, got tattooed um. by Grime. And um, <laughs> I mean, like, right? How can you go wrong there? Right. Yeah. Like it was just, I mean, that one was so, so impactful. And, and my buddy that I, that I did my first tattoo on went with me, you know, and he got tattooed by Grime too. So, so I got two days, I got to hang out there, Sweet. Which, which was awesome, mm -hmm. you know, but definitely he pulled the thing where he's like, Oh yeah. And Curtis, check out this tattoo he did on my leg. I'm like, oh, dude, no, it's like my first tattoo. <laughs> first tattoo. <laughs> I'm like, trust me, Grime does not want to see that, you know? <laughs> and you slap his hand, like, fuck no. Yeah, right, I did that. Uh, you know, but Grime's a super cool guy. He's like, yeah, cool, man. Right on, you know? Uh, you know what that I, means in the tattoo world, right? Yeah, cool. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> um. But that that was definitely one of the, the those memorable things, um, like you said, you know that that some of the things that he said to me uh, during getting tattooed and some of the things that I watched him do, I'll never forget those things. You know, those definitely formed a lot of my tattooing. You know, um, and then another huge one after that, which is, you know, man, talk about another monumental transition in my tattooing was, uh, I traveled to get tattooed by Philip Lou. 
after that. Oh, fuck. Uh, Amazing. Yeah. Um, so Philip did my back. Um, and, you know, just going out and hanging out in that guy's presence, I just feel like if you're a young tattooer, like that will just change your viewpoint on tattooing, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. I mean, you guys yeah. know Philip's work, right? Like, oh, it's fuck just yeah. crazy. You know? Yeah. And, uh, and I know who's cool. going to What's Sorry, up? continue. Continue. Uh, that one was cool. I went, I went with, so I, I went three times actually there, um, to get everything finished. So that was neat because it did take me a little while to get back over there. Um, I, I didn't, I wasn't quite making that much money still tattooing. You know, I had to save up, but I could go there. I, I, picked up some things. I went back home. I tried to practice some of the things that I learned and picked up from him uh, and then go back again and, and try to build upon that each time. Right. Um, and the dude is just so cool, man. He is just such a cool dude, you know? And he was so open about sharing everything in tattooing, you know? Um, yeah. Where I think, you know, grime in now has been a lot, more open to me but back in you know those early days and being a young tattooer he um he wasn't quite sharing like he is now and i didn't expect him to right like that's part of it you know he shares what he wants and that's okay you know um but you know like that being said like that guy has been nothing but fucking super nice to me too man like he's he's a great dude and um he's shared a lot of information with me now and he doesn't have to do that you know like i'm just thankful yeah. for it you know I, I could see him not really wanting to share because everybody's been taking for so long it's like right he put so much stuff out there so, so many people over like just co- basically copied and tried to emulate what he did and i can see him being like nah <laughs> you know like this how much how much should i be giving yeah, there's there's this interesting thing I think about too sometimes with like um with those two in particular, like Philip and Grime. Um where it's like if your if your skull looks too much like Grime, you're biting it, right? But if your waves don't look enough like Philip Blues, like you're fucking him up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <It's laughs> so know? true. Like, totally. <laughs> I don't know. Like maybe grime is there too. Maybe your skull has to look kind of like grimes now to like make a good tattoo, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, That's the thing. Like our, our era, our generation, right? Like you get, you know, all that you're copying. So-and-so you're copying so-and-so and and that's all original art, right? Philip grime. It's all original art. I find it very funny now that you see a lot of people's Japanese and it looks exactly like somebody else's and that's okay. But then you have like trad guys freaking out because a trad guy did a tattoo of a trad flash piece that they also did, and they're super angry. <laughs> well, trad, like, guys are, trad guys are usually more angry anyway. That's just, it's just like, <laughs> yeah. I, I did those English roses just like that. And it's like, cool. <laughs> yeah. So did Taylor Jerry. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's funny, right. though. It's just kind of switched. Because, yeah, in the 90s, I remember a friend of mine in Toronto got uh, a lava lamp tattoo. And it was basically a direct copy of, I think it might have been Marcus. And, like, the guy that did it got ripped for doing that, right? Because it's just, it's a copy, you know? And Right. But now, like, you see a lot of stuff like custom Japanese. You see a lot of guys where it's like almost the same because again right rules things are supposed to look a very specific way so it's kind of okay now on that spectrum but then yeah like all the traditional guys it's like they're the ones that are now copying like freaking out about copies and it's like that's all your stuff is right it's supposed to be. right it's like, it's yeah, there's it's like this line thing. of all of it right this yeah. line of all of it is like when is it like when is it like too much? When is it not enough? Like, cause if it's not enough, then it's not right. And it, in, so yeah, I think, I, think back I, in the, I think a long time ago, like a long time ago, but back in the eighties and nineties, there was a lot more room to experiment and create your own style. 
but now there's so much saturation that it's nearly impossible. Like, you know, to do something original now is really hard. So I think stuff just naturally gets more homogenized because you've got access to everything and there's so much of it. It's like, yeah, it just, Absolutely. how do you, how do you break out? You know, like you get a Stace Ferran, Water Street Phantom comes along, breaks out and blows everybody's mind. And now, right. you know, like eight, eight years later, I can flip through Instagram and see tons of that now. So, yeah. and stuff in that vein, you know, like, so it's really hard to fucking find a voice, I think. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and yeah, how do we change it up? Right. How do we change it up and not make everything look the same? Cause we see stuff that looks cool. We're like, wow, that looks cool. And guess what? You're at home. Like that looks cool. You're at home. Like that looks cool. The guy, you know, down the street's like, that looks cool. And we all do it tomorrow. Right. Like, I don't know. Yeah. You know? Like, it's, but it's, yeah. it's interesting what you said about uh, Philip Lou's water and stuff having to be a certain way to look good. And I, I, you know, I never thought of that before, but you're right. That's probably leads to that as well, which is like, you know, it's got to look a certain way and how much of it do you steal and add your own to it. That's, I never thought of that before, but that's right. Yeah. Because it's, um, but, but it was a thing, right? Like we never, we never heard, at least I didn't, maybe you guys did. Um, but around that era of, of both of those tattooers, like we heard a lot about, you know, grime getting ripped off. We didn't hear that as much about Philip, right? Like we, we, we just kind of looked at those waves and we're like, Oh, those look like Philip waves, but that's okay. <laughs> you know? <laughs> as long as they don't look like milk, right? You get those glorpy right. milk waves, right? You're like, yeah. So yeah, more and more people just like Philip, Philip over and over and over again. So do you think yeah. part of that also do with him being from an, a previous generation? Like he was an older generation from us, so it was okay that everybody was biting him because he was a little bit older, and there's that you know, passed down kind of consideration. Whereas with Grime, it's like, no, we're all his peers, contemporaries. And then stealing from your contemporaries considered poor. I don't know. Right. Yeah, maybe. Who knows, right? Um, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. I guess I'm going to get on here and ask them. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Get them on here. I want to know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Someone call Grime. Yeah. <laughs> tell him we have a podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell him, tell him we'll go on his if he comes on ours. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> we could take over his podcast; would be horrible. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So you travel a lot for tattooing. The so the NCA was that your first uh, like eye opening to a convention. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was, man. Yeah. And it was like, it was cool, you know? And uh, Paul Jeffries was there, right? Like, first time seeing yeah. him and like, you know. That was uh, a big year man, there was a, convention. Oh, man, there was so many amazing tattooers there. You know, and some people that I didn't really know how good they were because I was so young in tattooing, right? I've been tattooing six months and... <laughs> Um, yeah. just didn't know quite what I was looking at completely, you know? Um, but yeah. being immersed in the culture like that, like, oh, I was just like, it just made me more hooked, you know, walking around and watching everybody get tattooed at, in that setting and, and looking through portfolios one after another. I mean, you could spend your whole day at a convention when you were that green and tattooing, <laughs> just like your back hurts from looking at these photos, right? Um, where, where now I think maybe that's changed a little bit because we all look at them on Instagram and when we go to the conventions, we kind of already know a lot of the, the tattooers, I guess, maybe. I mean, not really. We yeah. can stumble upon other ones, but, uh, but it was different because they didn't, they didn't have anything anywhere else. Like that portfolio yeah. was their, their body of work. You know? Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, and if they lost it, that was yeah. it. Well, that was it. Right. So, yeah. what was your first convention that you worked? Uh, I uh, I think it was uh, the Austin convention. The uh, I think they called it Go Fast Live. 
or something back then. <laughs> um, yeah, I forget. I forget. But it was it was actually really good. Uh, Marcy put that one on. Um, was her name and you know Trevino was down there and he had these massive paintings up that would take up a whole wall I mean it looked like a mural you know um and I I did that convention with uh I, I mentioned him earlier Matt Rousseau uh from Durango um got me into that and uh yeah I remember like I remember I was there and, and got the first tattoo convention jitters man I'm like nervous as all get out you know I don't know. I don't know how to tattoo. And, and somehow they let me through the door and I go to pull this line and it's like, there's nothing there. Right. My first line of my first tattoo. And it's just like, I'm like, nothing. like what the heck? I'm like checking my needles. I'm like, like nothing. I'm like, what's going on? It's like super light. Right. And I look over and I didn't bring black. I brought my wash. I like got no black, right? I'm like, oh my God. Right? And then it's like, this isn't the day where you can just go two boots down and buy some black, right? You got to yeah. embarrassingly go to your buddy and be like, dude, I didn't bring black, man. And they got to give you some shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i think we've all been there was something like that at a convention fuck no no banner oh, yeah. no no fucking yeah. chair no fucking whatever or yeah. worse you hit that uh, line our buddy and it's Dust- like- yeah that's yeah bad our buddy dustin the table collapse and all of <laughs> everything he tattooed all the, all the cups all the ink everything slid down into his pelican case where all of his shit still was like, I was like, what are you going to do? He just closed oh. it and was like, going to clean it at home, I guess. He was so <laughs> Oh, <laughs> man. That's rough. Yeah. yeah. But it, it's that feeling, right? You pull that line and it, and it doesn't go. And it's like the hair on your neck stands up and you get sweaty. And you're just like, <laughs> uh, it's just, you know? That which that fear sweat you can smell from about six feet away too. It's the worst kind of sweat. <laughs> yeah, it's like this rotting onion smell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Did you end up doing like yeah. convention circuits? Did you start doing a lot of conventions? I didn't. No, n- not a lot. Uh, I did about one a year. I tried to do one a year. Um, so I did that. I did Austin for a little while. Uh, and then I switched it out and do it, started doing Seattle pretty early on. Um, I think it was like going a couple years before I joined in on the Seattle convention. Um, and that one was cool. I enjoyed that a lot, but yeah, I never, I never did a whole lot of conventions. Um, no. it was always, there's always like one person you meet at a convention that makes it worth it though. Right. There's yeah. always like, you know, where you get to go, you go eat with them and you hang out with them and you're just like, oh man, that one connection I made, like made that whole convention worth it. He's like one other person I could nerd out about tattooing with and they didn't get yeah. bored, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, amazing. Uh, yeah. That's, yeah. That's how I met Rob Noseworthy actually was. His first convention was in BC. I never, yeah. met him. I didn't even know so, he was even tattooing for a short period of time, and you know, had breakfast with him and and uh, Russ Moreland and some other guys. And yeah, same thing. I was just like, after I met Rob Nosery, I was like, that dude is so fucking nice. Yeah, like, probably should be <laughs> yeah. friends with him to balance out how much of a dick I am. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I got to meet Rob. Uh, when we did the Calgary convention and I thought the same thing, I was like, Oh man, he's just like such a nice guy, you know? Um, so yeah. great. And I remember when I first seen Rob's work too, and I'm like, who the hell is this dude? Why have I not heard of this guy before? You know, just like, <laughs> yeah, you're just like, how did this guy fly under the radar? I mean, I guess some people know about him now, but it doesn't seem like as many people know about him as they should, you know? It's Cause he's yeah. Canadian. <laughs> Yeah, so good, you know. 
Yeah. You guys don't get yeah. Canadian media down there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 He, you know, island life. He likes that quiet, slow life. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he's got. Yeah, it's good, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. There's yeah. always been those. It's always been cool when you find those people, right? Like I remember uh, when I when I went to get tattooed by Philip. Um, we stopped in Zurich to go visit Mick because Mick's like not that far from there. Right. And yeah. dude, talk about another amazing tattooer. Right. But it was like, you know, at Mick's shop at that time, he had this bookshelf in his shop and it was all the portfolios of all these people who ever guest spotted there, you know? Wow. And so I'm like looking through these things and I'm like, it's like insane. It's like Instagram before Instagram. It was like taking a drink of water from a fire hose because you're in mix shop. <laughs> and then you got yeah. this bookshelf of portfolios. You're like, dude, I could spend eight days in here, you know? <laughs> yeah. um, but I remember pulling down this, this portfolio and it's like Mike Roper, like, hmm, who's this dude? And then I looked through this book and I'm like, oh my God, Mike Roper, like this dude is killing it. You know, yeah. but he was so under the radar for so long, you know? Yeah, hey, um, still yeah. is for most people. And still, yeah, yeah. there's a lot of them. Yeah. There's a lot of them. Uh, yeah, we have, know, we have a Roberts? local guy. Yeah, we have a local guy actually in Alberta, Steve Bat, that like nobody knows. And it's just like the most amazing traditional Japanese body suits one after another he puts out. Nobody knows who he is. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. good. It's you wild. Know, like, yeah. Canadians know about him, but like, you yeah. know, really, you know, and it, you know, a lot of Europeans know about him. He gets tattooed by Mike Roper. He, I forget the name of the, he's actually not Hori Shige. He's actually part of a, like of a Japanese family um, with uh, that Shad guy. But uh -huh. yeah, like just for the, like the general, like he doesn't have an I, he doesn't have IG. He doesn't have a website. None of that. Never has. Right, you know, it's crazy. Yeah. It blows me away. It's so fucking. Good. And that's what's cool. Like, they, it seems like those guys are still staying busy. I think. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Right. Like. Yeah. D you, you know, we wonder. Um, you you hear so much about IG being so important to us in our industry right now, and like, you got to get yourself out there on Instagram to stay relevant. But do you? I mean, I, I don't know. Well, you know, maybe yeah, I wonder. Your own city. Yeah, yeah, I, I what you know the work always speaks for itself. That's an old adage, um, and I wonder if the opposite would be true. The anti marketing, you know, my uh, old friend of mine, Dustin, and I had a shop in an alleyway with no signage for a year, and we were fucking busy. And this was before Instagram and all that shit. We were busy, busy, busy. People could find us in this dirt parking lot with no signage, and we were, you know, make tattooing constantly all day I, I don't know if you need it sometimes like yeah if the work's yeah. good right yeah yeah but Man, how my shop have is to in... be yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah like my my shop is uh my shop is outside of the main city it's in an industrial area it is the very back corner of a parking lot of a bunch of automotive businesses and i have no signage i'm busy we're doing yeah. So many walk-ins at my shop, it's crazy. Like, you know, I think once you get enough people wearing your work and excited to talk about your work. Yeah, I think that's, that's the key. You know, that's like, if you're story, only capturing people story. that are like, you know, I'm like, ah, oh, you know, the, I just did my favorite sleeve on somebody and I know they're not going to tell anybody about it because it's cool. Right. Right? So like, who did that do? Uh, my buddy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, you, tattoo, yeah. you tattoo that, you know, younger person, just something small, their first tattoo or whatever. They're so fucking excited. They're telling yeah. everybody about it. And the next thing you know, you've got those people coming through the door, right? So. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I think people are in this day and age too are yearning for an experience that's different than everything else. I've had clients complain uh, to me about other artists who would spend 20 minutes, half an hour trying to get um, content for their Instagram of their tattoo. And they're like, I, I don't want any part of this. You know, I tattoos for me. I'll show it to whoever I want. I don't want to fucking sit here for half an hour while you fucking try to make some interesting content. Like, like I, I'm here. I fucking yeah. paid to get tattooed. You know, I want this to be about me, not you. 
<laughs> so, right, right. But uh, do you think there's also that like the opposite? Like I'm with you. Like that's I'm I have no interest in that part either, really. Right. But um, do you think there's the clientele that those people go to those people because they like that? Like, oh, aren't you going to make like a reel? Like, aren't we going to make like, let's sit here for 30 minutes and make a reel because I want to be in it and and do that too, right? Um, Yeah. Yeah, true. My clients aged with me. They don't necessarily want to think of two shits about a fucking reel. Yeah, that's that's the difference. It's, It's generational things for sure. You know what I mean? Like, but yeah. even, you know, once in a while, like, I'll have a client where it's like, am I going to get posted on your Instagram? <laughs> it's like, yeah. yeah. Right? And they're like, cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, and then there's other people where they don't even care. They're just like, yeah, thanks. That's awesome. Right. Cool. Right? But yeah, 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 for sure. It's just a, it's just a different clientele, you know, not for the worse, not for the better. It's just yeah. different now, yeah. I think, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. I think it's you just wild. attract... Like, you know- one of the biggest things about Instagram for me is like, is like thinking about how long it took us prior to see new tattoos, right? Like, yeah, we'd be biting at the bit at the magazine store for that like next bit of information, right? And by the time we seen these tattoos, they're like, what, six months to a year old, you know? Yeah. And, and by the time we're seeing them, that that person's worn it for probably a year, and now it's like. You put the, you take the picture, post the tattoo, and then put the bandage on. It's already got like whatever amount of views before the bandage comes off, right? It's like wild, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's too much. (laughs) I should just start taking pictures of the bandage. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) and then when they come back. You gotta they come back healed, and then the I'll bandage. take a picture of it healed, and then post it. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Start a new uh, I, can't, I can't remember whose stuff I was just looking at, but I fuck. It was someone I worked with recently, and they're posting stuff that I realized they take the photo when the client gets there of their last session. So mm, whatever they're working on that day doesn't get a photo that day because it's it looks fucking shite, it's inflamed and shit. And they post, and I was like, "Holy fuck, that's brilliant!" I gotta yeah, fucking start right. doing, it. <laughs> you know, like yeah, just yeah, posting yeah. field work. That's yeah. that's everybody's dream. I have so many sleeves in this goddamn city where I have no healed photos of. It's like emailing right. them, like please. Please come by the shop so I can get pictures. And then you know, two years goes by, and it's like I don't want pictures of that tattoo anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh my god! Yeah. yeah. So, so what cool. about guest? What about guest spots? You don't do a lot of conventions, but you do guest spots, or uh, how do you feel I about those? Done some. I have. Yeah, they're awesome. Right. I mean, it depends on the shop usually, but, uh, you know, most of my guest spot experiences have been fantastic, man, because it, it, it was like, we talked about earlier, it was like you network through your friend group. Right. And so it was like, we all kind of had this same thought, uh, in mind about tattooing and things like that, you know? Um, so I used to do a lot of guest spots, um, at my friend's mat shop uh, down in Durango. Uh, I would go down there, uh, try to get down there once a year um, and spend some time with him and and learn and just hang out because he's just an awesome dude um, and have that experience. And, uh, you know, Tim and Tim and I, uh, I started going up to his shop in Chicago first, right? I got tattooed by Tim. That was another one, like uh, way back in the day uh when he was at deluxe um and we just kind of became friends over it you know and then he opened pioneer and he's like hey man if you ever want to do a guest spot like cool i'm like yeah absolutely i want to do a guest spot you know (laughs) um and it's like it's like this thing that's like you know especially with guys like tim right where you're like you're so stoked to get there and you're like so excited and and then you see these drawings and you're like 
oh my god like what am i doing here like this they're just <laughs> all so good you know and it, you kind of like feel it in your stomach you're just like ah oh, like uh but but you just gotta embrace it right and go um totally and and chicago was awesome um you know a real a real memorable guest spot for me was uh being able to do a spot at skull and sword um when that was still around you know um and it was just like you know henry was there and uh lango utara was uh on his way to do a guest spot so i got like you know that one evening to hang out with utaro um super nice guy but like do you talk about the you know an intimidating shop to to walk into right and no shit. That. Yeah. Um, but like one of the awesomest things ever you know and that was one of those things too like grime has always been willing to help me out and and there was one morning where i was like hey grime would you mind looking at this and it was like didn't even take him two seconds. He's like, yeah, you need to change that because this thing is like all messed up. And as soon as he said it, I was like, oh my God, it like hit me like a ton of bricks. I was like, he's so right. Like that needs to change. And it, and he could see it so fast. And um, it was just amazing to me. And it was so cool that he was willing to do that, you know? Um, yeah. And, and do that. Yeah, critiques are it's such a gift. And I, I think, we're, fuck, I've been tattooing 20 years. I'm fucking scared to ask for them now. And I just got one recently, and it was, like, the most nerve-wracking thing, but the best thing at the same time. Like, it was – how valuable is that to you? Yeah. I mean, I don't really care f- – I mean, how do I say this? Like, I like to get tattoos critiqued after they're done, sort of. But sometimes I don't because I can't change it after that. Like, to me, it's yeah, yeah. a drawing, man. Like, I want to get that well, yeah. drawing critique yeah. before yeah, yeah. I do the yeah. tattoo so I can make those changes to make that tattoo better, right? Like, I can Absolutely. learn. Are you, are you, sending, are you sending, like, uh, are you sending pictures of, like, sketches out to anybody while you're working and, and figuring out a tattoo? Is that part of your process? Do you have a small group you do that with? Sometimes, yeah. Um I do do that a little bit. Uh, so, you know, the the guys at my shop, we all do that. We've done that for a long time, you know? Um, yeah. It's, sometimes it's hard. The translation can be hard through texting, you know, to, like, get that. The the Actually, the yeah. iPad really helps that out. Like, once once we had the iPad, man, it changed the way we were able to critique each other's drawings because then you're like, oh, I think you should change this. And like, put it in your iPad and be like, right here, you know, where this is, yeah. where before the, yeah. you're reading it and you're like, what the fuck does that mean? Like the eyes off? Yeah. Like, okay, <laughs> what do I, you know? Um, right. And, and then, so it was, it's hard to understand, but yeah, I do that. Um, you know, Teresa Sharp and I do that a little bit. Um, we've became friends over the years. She's a great tattooer, cool. awesome person. Cool. You know, um, so we've done a little bit. I should probably do it more. I should probably start doing that more again. Um, yeah. Because, yeah, sometimes I think, I, thought, I think it's like my direct circle. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's good because you do have that direct circle that you can work with, right? Like, I, you know, for me, I, I do have guys that can sometimes see stuff. But, unfortunately, my shop is full of, you know, much younger, uh, like, not just younger in age, like, just much younger in tattooing and stuff. So, yeah. They're usually the, they're usually coming to me for the critiques, you know. So I'm lucky enough that I do. Yeah, I send out stuff. I have a few people where I can shoot it out. They can draw with their finger on a phone or their iPad quickly and send it back and give me some input. And I'm always grateful for that. So yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's huge, right? That phone part of it is huge, right? Where they're able to yeah. like, kind of like visually like, show yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like I, I said, and I always like sending the same thing to a couple different people with different styles. You know, like if I if I'm mm-hmm. doing something kind of traditional Americana, I send it, of course, to my friend Ryan Gagne. But then I'll send it like I sent one to Dave the other day, and Dave's critique was, "I'd like to see rope," and I was just like, "What?" <laughs> and then, <laughs> You didn't tell me you were Ryan, sending it as a critique. And then, <laughs> you didn't send me a picture. And then uh, Ryan Gagne writes back and he's like, 
flip the ship, make the hand more like this. And, you know, he's trying to, like, draw it on his phone for me. And I was like, okay, sweet. Fuck the rope. <laughs> you didn't ask me for a critique. You just sent me a picture. <laughs> 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 oh, I'm, uh, I'm gonna draw on the next one. Fuck that. <laughs> make, I was make up, uh, make up on never, the you draw on yours. <laughs> I never, I never every time add rope, just add more rope. It, yeah, add totally. Rope. More rope. <laughs> Go to. <it>. Yeah. <laughs> I love rope. <laughs> <laughs> I had, I'd never drawn uh, Biomech before, and I, uh, Jeff Croce, I talked to him about it. He said, oh, you can send me pictures if you like, which is really kind. And I did, and he tore it apart, and I rebuilt and tore it apart, rebuilt. And he was he was helping me right up to stenciling. He was sending me, like, he'd on his iPad, he'd be like, get rid of this, change this, bring this over here, and everything. It was like, oh, fuck, that's super helpful, you know? like. Yeah, and it's great, right? Because how much better did that end up? turning out because you were willing to like allow yourself to get information that you needed, you know, like, yeah. 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 Why not take advice from people? Like it's, it's generally free. And usually if you're getting it from the right source, they have way more experience. So they're right. Like, yeah. And then your end result's going to be way better. And you, you're like, you know, more happy with your tattoo in the end. Right. You're like, Oh man, I asked for help on that. Cause that turned out a and lot that, better. That was only possible because I didn't leave the drawing to the last minute. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a procrastinator. <laughs> if I'm drawing the morning off, I don't really have time for critiques, right? Like, you don't it's, really have the it's time a start, to... starting to rethink, right. you know, process and stuff like that. It's cool. <laughs> right. You send that, you send yeah. that text. What do you think of this? It's last minute. They're like, eh, fucking start over. <laughs> Yeah. Hey man, it happens. <laughs> you know, my uh, my good buddy Kevin, uh, he sent me a picture of something. It was great. It was like, yeah, change the head size of the dragon needed to be a bit bigger and, and something else to forget. So we like draw and send it back and forth. And then he sends me the stencil, like it's a full back. And he stencils it and he sent me a picture of it. And it's like, dude, you got to change that. And you got to change that. Because like, where it comes around like the ass crack it just didn't it didn't flow everything else had flow so there he is with his client then he's sending me pictures back like the head's been rubbed off and he's made it even bigger (laughs) around the you know what i mean you know so the client was probably like an extra hour and a half of him like raising and drawing and it's like yeah look at how much better that is you know it's just like i'm so grateful that i can give him that because like i'm so grateful that i can do the same and i can get that same back you know without without that like you know, I don't even see my tattooing as being good as it is, but like without me being able to have that, it's just like, you know, I, I probably would give up. <laughs> well, and it's like, it's awesome that, that they like were willing to do that. Right. Because they knew they yeah. were like, man, if I just go ahead and change this, like I'm going to, I'm going to be in this whole back piece. It's going to take, you know, a couple months to get through this thing. And it, if I don't put that hour and a half in now, like these months down the road, it's going to be harder to get through this tattoo, knowing that yeah. I made these mistakes or right. For sure. You're just going to be, oh, yeah. right. Your energy level yeah. is just going to be so just down. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Totally. yeah. But if you put yeah. that hour and a half in and then you're like, you're stoked, right? You're like, Oh man, I put that extra effort into this and I made those changes and you know, you're feeling yeah. better about the whole process. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. So, for you, when it comes to your to your art and your art for tattooing and stuff, are you, are you pretty regimented? Do you always have like cut out times daily or, or weekly where you're working on projects? Have you always been that way? Like, kind of, what's your process? Um, I am that way now, and no, I I wasn't always that way. Um, I have three kids at home, uh, okay, so they yeah. keep me super busy, and they're young kids. You know, my my oldest is ten. Uh, my middle is seven and my youngest is four. Um, so, you know, yeah. they keep me super busy. And, and so I have to regiment my time that way. I have to plan my projects. I'm also just a planner by nature. Like, like the idea of freehanding a tattoo is like, it makes me queasy. I'm just like, there's no way, man, there's no way I could feel comfortable <laughs> doing that. Um, 
I, you know, like if I'm going to spend an hour drawing it on the arm, like I'm going to just spend that hour on paper and then stencil it instead of like drawing it on. Um, I, I yeah. just feel better that way. So yeah, definitely super regimented. And, you know, one of the hard things about that adjustment was like, you don't have that time to like not feel creative because your window of time, it's like, that's the window you've set aside. So you can't be like, ah, I don't really have that creative energy right now. Like, I'll come back to it later. Like, you got to just yeah. make it happen. And uh, for me, I, I found that drawing in the mornings has really helped me with that a lot. Because I used to draw after my kids went to bed, right? And so the house is quiet. Everybody's asleep. And I got all this time that I can draw. But after I, you know, get the kids off to school, get them fed, get them breakfast, do all that, get them to school, you know, go to work, do my tattooing for the day, come home, do the bedtime routine, get all that done, go that, get the kids to bed. I'm like, where's my creative energy coming from? I'm like, darn, man. I'm just like, you know? So if I, so if I get up and do it in the morning, I, I feel like I have a little bit more energy and a little, uh, just better problem solving, you know, because that's kind of how yeah. I look at tattooing. I'm like, I got this yeah. space. I got, this is what they want. Like, how am I going to solve this problem? You know, um, and get that in. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, very, very regimented, I guess, in my schedule now, because kind of I have to be, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Nice. Oh, that's cool. I like the problem yeah. solving uh, analogy. That's something that was explained to me early on in tattooing that, it's all art is, is just a series of problems you have to solve. So just yeah. keep figuring out your problems. That's, it takes right. a lot of the pressure off because it's just little problems, right? It doesn't have to be one big problem. It can be, I need to fix this ear. I need to fix this finger. I need to. Yeah. 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 Which is, it's interesting that like, that you say that because like, I, I feel like for me, I spend all my time on composition right? Like I spend like hours on composition and then the details, I'm like, whatever, man. Like, I don't care what the ear looks like as long as it's like a good composition. (laughs) (laughs) At least hopefully a good composition. Hopefully I can make it look okay. I get it. Like I see, I see some stuff, especially more kind of in the illustrative style where I'll be like, yeah, that's drawn so well, but that composition is fucked. Like, and yeah. that ruins the tattoo. Yeah. Like, bad composition and illustrative tattooing ruins it just as much as bad background in Japanese tattooing. Yes. Right? Like, right. it's just, right. Just not, it's crazy. And I think, you know, I'll look at something and I'll be like, that probably had like the greatest composition on a flat piece of paper. Right. But, but now that it's the, wrapped, then once it wraps, it's just like yeah. lost. And it's such a bummer when I see that because, like, it's a beautiful piece of art, but I can't look past that one thing that I find very important yeah. in composition. So it's very interesting that that's your focus first. So, yeah. Cool. Yeah. I mean, you know, hopefully that's like working and doing the right thing. That's where I'm putting my time and that's where I'm focusing. So I hope that it's like noticeable, you know? Um, but, you know, it's, it's funny. The other thing you mentioned, like drawing sleeves and how they wrap and how, how they do this. You know, I, I did have the opportunity to sit down with Steve Moore one time and we, we were talking about that. And, and at the time, it just felt like sleeves were so hard for me to, like, get that 360 degree view and have interest the whole way around. And, and, and I was like talking to Steve and I was like, yeah, man, it's like, you know, sleeves are the hardest. And he stops and he goes, yeah, I used to think that till I started doing whole bodies. And then I was just like, like, I was so <laughs> not there. You know? Thanks, Steve. <laughs> like, thanks, Steve. But yeah, like, you're, you're like, years ahead of us, man. I don't, I don't know, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and coming from Steve, dude, right? that's like the like, most innocent and humble statement. You know, some people would see yeah. that as like almost an ego thing, like, ah, buddy. But it's not. Steve. No. It's just like the most like, oh, because he knows, wait until you have to do full body. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was, there was like no ego behind it at all, right? It was no. just yeah. like, no. it was like he was relating like, oh, I've been there. I know what you're going through. 
but guess what? Yeah. Check this out. It gets right? harder. Like, yeah, that's what <laughs> I mean. Like, like, he's just telling you, like, oh, yeah, you're just foreshadowing for your future. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, amazing. So, amazing. did you guys sit you down know? and draw? We didn't draw that time, no. I would love to draw no. with Steve. Um, as much as it would be intimidating as all get out and all of those things, you know. But, um, you know, he's one of those people just like – I mean, the guy's a monster, right? His drawings are just amazing, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know? Yeah. So. Yeah. I, I look back at my time with Steve, and I'm so grateful I never wanted to be an illustrative tattooer because that would have just been, you know what I mean? Like, I never felt I was in the shadow of Steve Moore working with him for, yeah. you know, as all the years that I did, uh, which is great because – you know, his stuff was amazing. I, you know, liked my stuff. He was able to help me with my stuff. And it was it was a really great dynamic, I think, for, for me and the shop that we were coming up together in in the 90s and early 2000s, for sure. But, yeah, like, if I – because nobody else was doing that style, especially in our shop, right? So I, I couldn't yeah. imagine if I was, like, trying to do that style while working with yeah. me. It would just be like, yeah. 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 <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah, well, like, I mean, I, and even like, you know, like, like you can't compare yourself to that, right? Like, no, no. matter what kind of tattooing you do, because you're just, you're, you're just, ugh, it's not going to be good for you, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, yeah, you just can't do it, man. You just, yeah. it's like, it's like one of those things that was like, I remember going through this phase of learning how to navigate myself through Instagram. And, and I think it was like, I think it was a Steve Moore tattoo that like really helped me out with that because I'm like looking through Instagram, I'm like flipping. And then it's like, here's this epic fucking Steve Moore tattoo. Right. And I'm just like, Oh, like I should cut my arms off for whatever. Right. Like I'm done. <laughs> and I realized yeah. like by doing that, that I felt personally that i was like making that about me i was like oh man i just looked at this steve moore tattoo and made it about myself and and my position and what what is that about like look at steve's more tattoos and just be like dang dude you've worked hard and you're amazing and like you know what i'm gonna drop a comment and tell you like dude you're awesome like you've worked hard great job you know instead of like oh i'm gonna cut my hands off or whatever because we've all yeah. been there we've all feel it you know oh yeah I, yeah. I was like years for me on um, instagram when i finally joined instagram it was not a positive thing for me because i just got so into my hard. head about it like it was very hard you know like and seeing like yeah. people that were i'm like what do you mean you've only been tattooing a couple years and you're this good like what the fuck like what am i doing you know and and i start you know, my self doubt in my drawings all of a sudden is just escalated so high because of it, you know? And yeah, and then finally, just one yeah. day, just being like, why am I doing this to myself? My tattoos are good. Yeah. <laughs> I have very happy clients. I've been doing this for almost 30 years. Like, what the hell am I doing to myself? Right? So, yeah. 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 It was we hard, can be though. our own worst. It, we can be our own worst enemies, right? Like, oh, like, yeah. Um, you know, like watching James Tex draw, right? And he's he's like just knocks these things out. And and for me, hanging out with with Tim Beecher, and it's like kind of the same thing, man. The guy just sits down and he just like to me, it looks so fluent and easy. You know, his perspective is he's struggling, but I don't see it that way. I'm just like, man, you make yeah. it look so easy. And and uh, you know, I I feel like for me, I was like, dude, it takes me so much longer to draw than these guys. Like, I'm not good enough, you know? Like, I can't do it like they do, and I'm just not good enough. So so I was like, I'm going to learn how to draw faster. And I pushed myself really hard, like, oh, I got to get this done quicker. I got to get this done quicker. And then I made myself miserable because I was trying to reach this thing that wasn't me. And I was just like, yeah. then that one day I was just like, you know what? I don't care anymore. Like, it, I don't do that like them, and, and I and – I, make myself unhappy if I try to do it like them. So I'm just going to yeah. do what I do. And, and then drawing got really fun again because I was just like, you know, taking that pressure off of myself. Right. Like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 You know, 
Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's yeah. process is different and the end outcome is different. And that, that's the beauty about what we do, right? It doesn't have to be the same. Yeah. Like we don't all have to be James Tex or Steve Moore, you know, there's, yeah. yeah. Or work their process, you know, Kim, just learn from right. it. <laughs> yeah. Kim said something really yeah. great that I, that's really helped me actually since we did that episode with Tim, he talked about when we were talking about art and stuff and he was like, you know, man, I just got to the point where I realized what's in my head is not what I'm going to be able to put on paper. Doesn't yes. make it bad. Right. I struggled with that for so long until he fucking talked about that. And I'm not even joking. I have done more painting since that podcast than I've done in the last 10 plus years. Because yeah. I get so frustrated, I throw it out. I'm like, this is not what I want. This is not what I'm trying to do. You know, like with tattooing, the client tells me what they want and I do the best representation and I'm okay with that. But when I'm trying to put something on paper for kind of, you know, myself or whatever, I fucking struggled with that so hard. And then just that one conversation with Kim just was like, oh yeah, in my head, I'm yeah. amazing. <laughs> I don't have the tools to translate it from my head to my hand to paper. And that's okay. Just work with what I got. Work yeah, with yeah. what I got. Right. And I've been yeah. so much fucking happier with doing that stuff, you know? And also, too, I have a crazy supportive girlfriend that's into art and crafting and stuff. And we're doing an art show uh, thing together. And it's like, at one point, I was bummed out. And she was like, takes it, moves 10 feet away. And she's like, look at it now. And I'm like, yeah. Oh yeah, I'm in it. I'm too in it. I need to step back, yeah. right? So, but yeah, that conversation with Tim just fucking changed so much for me, and I'm yeah. so grateful for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm grateful. You know, any time that I've got to spend hanging out and tattooing and drawing with that. I mean, that guy's done that to me so many times. I can't tell you so many times where he's just like, "Yeah, man, I don't know. Change your perspective like this," and I'm just like. All right, like cool. <laughs> thanks, Tim. You know, like you know, it, it's, yeah, it's neat, you know, awesome. Yeah, nice. I, 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 go ahead, Sean. No, no, go on. I was gonna say, I think we get so locked up in our own heads and way of thinking that we you need that outside perspective. I think for everything, right? Not just your drawings, but your process or how you're looking at your career, all that kind of stuff. You know. Yeah. And it's, well, the, the thing that people say too, right. And they're like, well, as long as it's working, then who cares? Right. And you're, and then if you're like me, you're like, well, that's the thing. Like nothing ever really feels like it works. Right. Like everything's feeling like hard and uncomfortable and it doesn't turn out how I have in my head. And you know, so like, is it working? I don't know. It doesn't feel like it's working, you know, but I guess to some degree it is, you know, I, I don't know. Yeah. If working, yeah. if that struggle, if you're feeling that struggle though, would a different way of looking at it be that you're at your limit. So you're constantly pushing yourself. Like you're constantly pushing yourself to get, I mean, if it was easy, if it was easy, you might not be pushing yourself. You might just be relying on your own formulas and tricks. And... Right. Yeah. Yeah. Tattooing's uh, got way too easy, man. I don't know. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I, I figured that out. On to the next thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, so, uh, you know, since, since COVID and, you know, everybody's shutting down and stuff like that, you have three kids. Have you done much traveling in the last few years? I haven't, man. No. Yeah. I mean, I've traveled. You love Fort Collins. You love Fort Collins. <laughs> I do, man. I do. It's true. Yeah. Awesome. Um, it's it's home, man. Right? It's crazy. Yeah, I, I do love it here, and I'm thankful for all my experiences that I've had to have outside of it to like really make me appreciate what I do have. Right. Cause sometimes yeah. if you, if you don't do those things, you get complacent and you don't realize how, how good kind of you have it sometimes. Right. It's like mm -hmm. part of one of the great things about a convention is going there and realizing like, Oh man, actually I do have it pretty good at home or whatever, you know? Yeah. Um, but now I've kind of forgot the question. Uh, I'm just traveling. Asked, yeah. I was just curious. Oh, yeah. Like if you, you know, if you still get out and about, <laughs> Yeah. So, man, I was supposed to do the deadly convention um, that James put on. 
And that was like my first big tattoo travel that I was doing in a long time. And uh, it was like right after COVID, but like regulations yeah. were still weird. And uh, the night before we were leaving, I was like, oh, man, I feel like a little bit off, you know. And that morning I was like, you know, if they test me to get on this plane and I test positive, like I'm not going to get through. So I don't want to waste my time. I tested positive an hour before my flight, man. I was like, what? Ah. Oh, no. Yeah. So, and I made it, it, I made it all through the whole thing up until then. That's when I got COVID. So, Fuck. Yeah, what am I gonna do, you know, but, uh, so yeah, I haven't had an opportunity to travel much since then for tattooing. Um, and it's yeah. hard to be away from my kids now. They're Pretty sure. Young and I want to embrace that time with them while I have it. Yeah. You know, it's like, I want to be a good tattooer, but like, I really want to be a good dad. You know, that's the important to me. So absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Let's uh, bring up that super serious that, question now. That awesome question. Yeah. Who are your uh, uh, top five tattooers? Five. Do, yeah. do I get to do five. the crow, do you think? Do I no. get to do the crow, thing here? Like a Fuck no. That was not, no. No. <laughs> we'll put, it, we'll put that to bed. We put it to bed. That's that it, that's never happening. Right? That was, that was yeah, he did a good job at doing that, though. He's like, he's oh manipulative. God, he's manipulative. <laughs> <laughs> Game um, the system. <laughs> I mean, I I think I've mentioned a lot of them already. You know, um, you know, I got to go with Philip Blue. That guy's just been a huge influence on me um, for such a long time. Grime, you know huge influence uh influence uh tim right yeah um this is where it starts to get hard right like you get that yeah, you a little bit and you're like you're like there's so many good tattooers out there man um, there's gonna be guys your friends are gonna be listening to this going is he gonna mention me is he gonna mention me yeah gonna mention totally. me? he didn't fucking mention me <laughs> you mean, you mean people People are still tuned in at this point. Really? They didn't, they didn't, no, they they, they, they just come to this already? point. Yeah, they fast they forward the voice. They don't care about the rest. They, <laughs> they've all dropped off by now, man. I know it. Yeah. Who um, makes the top five? I make the top five. I make the top five. Yeah. You know, man. You know, one of the people I gotta say, like, I think just uh, their impact of tattooing, the way that that they do it. Um, I just, I, I want to try to pull that into more of my tattooing. Uh, Lose lips or or Lars. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, it's just like it's so incredible, simple, but so complicated at the same time. You know, like it's so legible and. Uh, so, so I think I literally forgot about that there. person until right now. Oh man. I still check yeah. his stuff out every once in a while. Yeah. Uh, it's like, you know, I wonder how many tattooers through the evolution are influenced by that guy, but don't even know it because all tons. the tattooers that they're influenced by are influenced by him. <laughs> oh, you know, absolutely. like yeah, a lot, I think, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. But just just these amazing tattoos, you know. Um, one more, one more. Uh, I'm glad I'm not uh, you. <laughs> right. Uh, I think I'm gonna go with with uh, Teresa Sharp. I, I really wow. like hey, Teresa nice. Sharp's work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I see you she know, just opened it, a new shop. She did. With that? Yeah. She yeah. Just, well, she's. She just moved locations, so it's still oh. her shop, but she's yeah. just moving locations, you know? And, oh. and Teresa's been good for a long time, I feel like, but, like, yeah. watching her over the last few years, I'm like, oh, man, you're, like, you've really got a thing going that I gravitate towards. So, for me, I'm like, oh, you're, you figured it out. Like, that's looking awesome, you know? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. And so... So yeah, cool. and she's just great. She's a great person, and, and that too. So nice. It's been that fantastic. Was I got through there. Yeah, yeah. And, more, but you know, <laughs> and fast. 
You got through it fast. Yeah. Now you just have to well, put up with all those people calling you, being like, "What the fuck, dude?" <laughs> like your coworkers, your yeah. coworkers are gonna be like, "What the fuck, yeah. bro?" But you forgot nobody made it this far. Nobody's gonna call me. They were like, uh, "I was like, couldn't get through it. I was gonna wait till your top five, but it was fucking boring. You worked that one <laughs> shop your whole career. Like, <laughs> we're, we're posting, we're posting the top five as a clip." <laughs> <laughs> Fastest top five record. Yeah. Hear that, Ben? You didn't make it. Ben's going to be like, why do those guys have it out for me? (laughs) Never even met him. Never met him. Don't know who he is. (laughs) Amazing. Oh, my God. Curtis, thank you so much for joining us, Ben. Yeah, I really appreciate it, dude. It's. Yeah, thank you guys so much for having me. It, it's uh, it's really fun just to like talk to other tattooers, right? It's like yeah, oh, it's just awesome. talk to them. yeah, and, it is. Uh, yeah, I'm appreciative of you guys uh, giving me the time. So thank you. Thanks, man. Thank yeah. you. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. All right, I'm gonna. Thanks just, so uh, much. Hit stop. Oh, here. Got, thank good guys supply for always supporting us. Oh yes, and uh, whole yeah. fast social club. It was great getting to know Curly and this amazing guy that tattooed with one arm. You know, the customer had to stretch his own skin. So I did get blood poisoning from him twice. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) twice. Ed Hardy brought this whole uh, Japanese influence into American tattooing. Once Dave Shore came onto the scene, it was like tattooing completely changed. If anybody could say anything about greaseball Japanese, it's fucking Dave Shore. Salty, piratey, bikery, just hard not to do. Man, he'd pull in on his chopper with the tattoos and the girls, and I mean, he was just like so cool, man. He captured vulgarity and pleasure and insanity and recklessness. Tattoo in the 80s or 70s, just not the same, uh, yeah, you had to be a tough guy. I was scared shitless. Even though I was, a, you know, kind of a biker guy, these were bigger biker guys, you know? <laughs> I'm not totally sure you could paint the picture accurately to somebody now getting into tattooing about what it was like then. And the only reason I, f- I would say or I feel that way, though, is because they might not believe you. We had the limo waiting for him with all the lines of blow lined up at the airport. This is the way we do it in Canada. <laughs> in the like 80s, 90s, Paul, Paul Jeffries was like the king of tattooing. It wasn't just in Canada. Like, am I supposed to stop tattooing? Because if this is what I'm supposed to aspire to, (laughs) it's not gonna happen. Each one of these old masters influenced groups of tattooers who in turn influenced other groups of tattooers. The True North Strong Tattoo Book. This is a massive tattoo encyclopedia of Canadian tattooers. 350 pages. It's an 11 by 17 coffee table format. Sean and Dan worked tirelessly to get this thing out. And sadly, it never made it to print, so it's available for free download at theholdfastsocialclub.com and championtattoo.ca.